we are getting an absolutely insane number of very, very cool champions in the game here in 2024. So it is very easy to lose sight of some of the old time good champions that we had to play with. Some of the champions we just had to make do with all those sorts of good things. So we're going to be talking about one of them here in the game today. Make sure to go ahead and comment down below if you still use this champion, if you've ever used him, if you've never used him, uh, or where you use him if you do. So what we're going to be talking about is Seducer. This guy is actually going to be a pretty, pretty cool rare champion of all things in the game. Uh, I'm not showcasing him with his duo partner, but on one of his skills here you can see he does actually have a AoE 50% ally protection for two turns and a block damage on himself for one turn, but that does require that Temptress be on the team, which is another rare from the Undead Hordes. However, the rest of his kit is very, very good. So he has an A1 with a 45% chance of placing a Sleep, which damage based on defense, so that's a very decent champion already, right? That's a very solid chance to place a Sleep. This is great for overall crowd control abilities. This is great for now somewhere like a Sand Devil team or something like that if you just need a backup sleeper, right? You pair this guy with somebody like a Muck Stalker and you have basically all the sleeps you need coming from two rares alone, plus the rest of this guy's kit. A2 attacks all enemies, 100% chance of placing a 25% decrease attack. This is on a three turn cooldown, damage based once again on defense. You could very easily build this guy to nuke, although I don't see why you would. And, of course, this is the small version of the decrease attack, so you could make an argument that you want to bring the Harmony Blessing that's actually going to allow him to place the bigger version of the debuff. However, I have gone ahead and run him in Faultless Defense. We'll go over that, and it pairs nicely with his A3. Places a 30% increase, so the small version of an increased defense on all allies for two turns, and a block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns. One of the only other champions in the game that does a block debuffs from a rare perspective is going to be marked who i believe she does it for one turn on a three turn cooldown so having this two turn block debuffs is absolutely fantastic this guy's bringing an increased defense which is going to help your not so tanky champions survive it's going to help you know just mitigate some of that damage and then it's going to also help any sort of decrease uh, sorry any defense based nukers to actually you know output a little bit more damage as well and then of course you combine that with his decrease attack, and he is helping your team team survive so, so much more in the game. It is ridiculous. We're not done there, though. He does also bring a ally HP in all battles by 25%, which is a crazy amount for a rare aura. If we go ahead and compare that to somebody like a legendary that I made a video on here not too long ago, Lady of Aerith, she's only bringing 30% in all battles. So this is a rare champion that has 5% less on his aura than a legendary. This is fantastic. Of course, the faultless defense. Whenever an enemy attacks an ally under an increased defense placed by this champion, reflects a portion of the damage back to the attacker. In his case, since he is a good old juicy 6-star, he is going to reflect 15% of the damage. Like I mentioned... You might want to bring him over with Nature's Bounty, so that would actually increase the chances of him placing the bigger version of the decrease attack. So if you're really struggling to survive in some areas or those sorts of things, that might be something that you want to do. In terms of the artifacts, this is what we have now. I won't lie, this gear is ridiculous because this is the gear that's primarily on my Pytheon for use in the live arena. So the gear definitely is doing some solid work for this champion. I won't lie about that. So we have... HP, of course, HP Ascension, Defense, and Speed. We got HP, Defense, Speed, Defense, and Accuracy. We got Speed with Defense, more Defense, more Defense, <laughs> a little bit of Accuracy on there. We got a Mythical piece here, which is a very, very, very nice piece. More Defense, more Speed here on the Immortal set. Speed, HP. So in terms of the sets this guy's rocking, he has a two-piece uh, protection, he has Speed, and he has Immortal. Then, if we take a look at the accessories, this is we got just some accuracy and some speed. More accuracy here. I do have him a two-piece refresh as well, so there is a slight chance that he actually refreshes the cooldown of his skills. Because his A3 specifically is on a four-turn cooldown with a two-turn duration, so you probably want that to be refreshed if at all possible. 
these are the stats we're rocking him with here. So almost 70k on the HP, almost 5k on the defense, 272 on the speed, 224 resistance, and 294. I do actually have a dragon run to show you. So these are what his stats are going to look like inside the dragon. If you're curious, we did just bump him over that 70k HP. I think... This guy's absolutely fantastic, and for reference, I have no masteries on him. If you're running masteries, what I would probably recommend is maybe something like Bulwark, although he's not a particularly champ, uh, tanky champion himself, so perhaps an Eagle Eye would be a little bit better. Uh, you could build him up with more resistance, more defense. Really, any of the tier 6 masteries from either support or defense are going to do very well. You could easily build him in a War Master, of course, although I don't really see you getting a whole ton of damage out of him. Although he does have that increased defense set up for his own damage dealing abilities as well, right? So, uh, and he has definitely very, very good base defense at about 1300 there as well. Uh, I do have some blessings coming in here with a little bit more stats and all those sorts of good things. Let's go ahead and talk about where you can use him though. So, of course, one of the most notable places is going to be Faction Wars. Undead Hordes is actually open today, so we can talk about the champions in here, right? So if we're looking at damage dealers, enablers, those sorts of things, it's probably better if we go ahead and talk about this from the champion index. But if we're talking about any sort of champions that are bringing, like, especially a block debuffs, we have basically nobody else doing it on the rare section. We do have Temptress, of course, who is a very decent champion on her own. Uh, so basically bringing an increased attack, increased crit rate, granting an extra turn when paired with Seducer. Attacks four times at random, 75% chance of placing a leech, and attacks one enemy has a chance to steal a random buff. So she's a decent champion to pair with Seducer. Uh, but in terms of other champions from this, you do have somebody like a Doom Screech who's fairly decent. Not a whole lot of utility coming in for him though, right? Like he can just help boost up your team. Even if you're coming up here to the epic section, you don't really have a whole lot of very solid support options. They are definitely starting to grow, so you do have like a Vogoth, you have a Mausoleum Mage who can help out, and a Kafru who I need to do a video on still as well. But apart from that, there's not really much else. Uh, Gorgorab, it would be a shame not to mention him, and then of course Seeker. Seeker doesn't really bring anything besides an increased attack. Gorgorab brings heals and revive. And then at the legendary level, of course, you do have some insane champions, but not everybody's going to have those. So for Faction Wars, he can absolutely help you help you out a lot. Like, he could probably help carry you all the way to stage 21, I would say, especially if you haven't built like I do. But if, you know, you're probably going to have beaten uh, Faction Wars at that point anyways. So if we talk about uh, City of Centranos, I did take a look through this, and on the hard level at least, there isn't any stages, it appears, where it's a boss level that you can actually use Seducer, so you're probably not going to get the most use out of him there. However, if you do come across a stage uh, that has certain awakening requirements, he could be a very solid champion for that, right? Because, uh, again, he's bringing not only all that utility, but he's also a rare champion, so it's going to be a lot easier to get awakenings for him versus somebody that's a legendary or even an epic quality. And lastly, I will throw the run here on screen, but I did actually take him into a Dragon Hard 10 run with this team right here. So we of course have a free-to-play friendly option right here in Mithrala. We have two epic options in the way of Akemptum and uh, Venomage. Both of these are very replaceable though. Uh, a Kemptum you can bring with a, basically any other damage dealer, especially if they're doing poisons. You already have the Hex coming in from Mithrala, so nothing too crazy there. And then, of course, Venomage you could replace with any other champion that does poisons as well. So notable mentions would be somebody like a Dark Kale. Uh, you could use a uh, Tomb Lord. You could use a... Uh, there's this other champion whose name I always forget as well, Eurogrim. If you have a Eurogrim, you could absolutely bring this guy because he's just placing the poisons as well. We have a Lady of Aerith in here, which, not to worry about that, if you wanted, what you could do is you could actually just go ahead and replace her... And you could instead run an Apothecary. They're basically doing the same thing. So this team right here will get you through hard 10 on Dragon. Uh, it was about a 4-5 minute run or something like that. So it's not even that crazy in terms of how long it took. Uh, in terms of the builds, if you're curious about that. So we'll go ahead and put Lady Aerith back in there since she was the team I beat it with. This is the build on her, so 7200, 3100, 219 on the speed. She doesn't bring any debuffs or anything like that, so you don't really need accuracy. My Akemptum is 248, 52,000, and 3400, with 410 on the accuracy. Not a requirement, though, to be that high. 
Uh, I have him there because I use him in a lot of areas that require very high accuracy. 355 accuracy on Venomage, 66k HP, 3700 defense. Again, this is some of the harder content in the game. I always say this, but if you're trying to beat hard content like this, uh, this is absolutely going to be a team that can be used, right? So uh, you could argue, all oh, the gear is ridiculously OP, those sorts of things. I would also argue back that if you're trying to beat stage 10 of hard mode dragon, you should probably expect to have some decent gear requirements needed with that, right? As you can see from the run on the screen, there wasn't really too, too much of a threat at any point during it. I had full faith in this team. I didn't bring a reviver. The combination of having seducer bringing his decrease attack as well as the increase of uh, defense was insane, helping to reduce the poisons we take from the boss, the damage we take from the boss, all those sorts of good things. The block debuffs, blocking those poisons, of course, right? Lady Earth coming in for the strengthen and the heals. It works so well together. I would highly recommend checking out Seducer, right? If you need somewhere or someone specifically to help bump you up in content a little bit, he might very well be able to help. In terms of other dungeons where you'd get use out of them, I would say definitely Ice Golem's Peak. You can get good use out of them, right? The increased defense, the decreased attack when you're facing the hard hits from the Ice Golem, he's definitely going to help you out there. You could run him somewhere like Sand Devils, like I mentioned. He's bringing all that survivability. He brings the sleep on the A1 in case your other sleep champion just happens to miss it. You could probably even bring him in Phantom Shogun since he has some of the buffs and everything there that can help. I wouldn't really recommend it though. City of Centranos, like I mentioned, he definitely could do some work there. Doom Tower Progression, he's going to be a very, very good champion that can help out as well. And, of course, you could run him in something like Clan Boss, right? So, if you have some sort of an Infinity Comp or something like that that you're trying to pull off, having that increased defense as well as the block debuffs is going to be absolutely insane. Some of the Wixwell teams could definitely benefit from that, especially if you have a buff extender on the team and everything like that to help out. So, I hope this little bit of a retrospective on this particular champion helped out. Like I mentioned at the start, go ahead, leave a comment, let me know if you use him. Let me know if there's anything from these guides or showcases that you'd like to see a little bit more in depth. Uh, I do like to show the run on screen while I'm talking just so it doesn't, you know, hold you guys hostage at the end of the video while you're waiting, you know, 10 minutes or something like that for the run to complete. Thank you guys all so much for the support on the channel recently, and I'll see you next time.